Okay, game hunting in London. So as you guys may know, I recently traveled to London for my first time all the way from Hashta in Norway. And now you know the reason for my travel. I went to the Pokemon event to be one of the first ones to try out Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But meanwhile, while I was in London, I thought to myself, I'm gonna check out the local game stores. So I'm gonna take you through four different game stores in London and I'm gonna show you on the map where they are located and what you can be expecting from some a thing. Otherwise, I mean, just enjoy the video. It's just a lot of games in game stores. So I'm gonna take you through the entire travel, which means two airplanes, first down to Oslo and then to Gatwick Airport of London. Which I think was a very beautiful airport. The security was high and it was clean. And while I travel, I gotta have my croissant and then we arrived. So my first impressions of the streets of London was that all the buildings are very pretty and decorated with flowers. The air felt clean, which I did not necessarily expect. And all the taxis drove too fast. The iconic two stories buses are to be seen everywhere, along with the traditional red phone boots. That's how you know you are in London. We stayed at the Ashburn Hotel that is located a bit south of the Kensington Palace. A beautiful deluxe room, gotta say, loving the room, with a view of the streets below. While the traffic wasn't really noisy, the train rails close to the hotel were rather loud. Otherwise, it was a very nice hotel with a helpful staff. So, on our first day, we went to the two closest game stores we found on Google Maps. The first one being a CEX located in Shepherd's Bush, inside a shopping center. From what I understand, these stores works like GameStops, but with electronics and DVDs as well, which means you can trade them in and stuff. And as you can can imagine I had a hard time pronouncing this name. I even asked the lady that worked there, how do you pronounce this? <laughs> she didn't laugh. So in this store I am met with a glass display of retro games. They have Super Nintendo, PlayStation Portable, PS Vita, N64 games and I see Tales of Eternia on the PSP. One of the Tales games that I have never played and kinda low-key wanna have it. I also see Tales of the World, Radiant Mythology and Dark Chronicle. They also sold PSP and PS Vita systems, Racer products, PS4 games, Xbox One games. But I was more interested in older stuff. And here we have their PlayStation 2 games collection. A small variety of sports and racing titles, but I also saw old The Sims, some Crash Bandicoot and Spyro as well. I didn't find any of the older Atelier Iris games that I am especially looking for, but I do imagine those are hard to find. Over on the Nintendo 3DS section, I saw WarioWare Gold, which is one that I don't have. The section wasn't very big, but there were a lot of obscure titles that I have never seen before. Then over to the Switch section, which had no big surprises as I am very up to date on the Switch games right now. But I found one that caught my eye a little bit and it is called Turnip Boy, which is supposedly a Zelda-like adventure game controlling a turnip. I saw it on Game Pass now recently and um, it is exactly that. Now, swiping my way over to the Xbox section, I decided to pick up a little title that looked fun, Valkyria Revolution. I have never heard of this particular game, never played any of the Valkyria Chronicles or anything like that, but it just looked fun. <laughs> Flipped it on the other side and it just looked fun. I have no idea. Mixed reviews at best. But it was at only four pounds, so I had nothing to lose. Scouring over the PS2 section again and later on finding the small GameCube section, <laughs> which was very small and as of which I am very interested in. I am loving GameCube games. That is such a fun small console. It is one of my favorite consoles. I am not a collector, but there are still GameCube games that I know that I want to play sometime in my life. But unfortunately, nothing really stood out in that collection. And I feel pretty done collecting for the Wii and Wii U, to be honest. But they did have some of those games as well. Now the PS Vita selection was really small. So I have only picked up Valkyria Revolution. I'm happy with that. And downstairs was their huge DVD section, which I happened to find a few series seasons box sets, like a few seasons of Medium and some True Blood for myself. 
and we are off to the next store. This is a game and that was right by this first store. This store reminded me of a very traditional GameStop store with a focus on gaming merch and peripherals as well. I saw Zelda headsets for 14 pounds, not bad. I wanted to pick up the Switch game 13, but when I went to pay later on, they said I didn't have it, but the cover was on the shelf. That was a bummer. It's one that I've been meaning to pick up for a long time. I found PlayStation decorative lights. Not sure if I'm gonna gift that to someone or keep it for myself. I found a World of Warcraft something. I'm not sure if it was a puzzle or a board game of sorts, but it made me think of tiny ads. The Switch games collection was okay, but there was nothing there that I felt like I needed. Later on we had dinner with the Nintendo bag seller people and hanging around the next day with Jörn Björn, a Danish YouTuber. Link down below to him. We had a blast. It was so fun meeting you. It was like we already knew each other sort of thing. Instant connection. We had a long walk in London just looking around and through a park and seeing Kensington Palace during sunrise. It was a moment. We had a moment going on. There's just something magical about experiencing a sunrise. We saw squirrels. So then we wandered over to the next CEX store and it was unfortunately closed because we were there too early in the morning. Now we had breakfast at a place called Tab Tab and here you can see some other pickups, a couple of gaming magazines called Play and Retro Gamer. I rarely buy any physical magazines anymore. I rarely even see them anymore, to be honest. Now here you can see Big Ben. I gotta say, quickly though, Big Ben is actually so fun to see in real life. I feel like pictures and videos online of Big Ben does not do it justice because seeing it with your own eyes is incredible, cute a building. Now here we are in the top of the Eye of London, which is the Ferris wheel that I talked about that I was gonna have done. Uh, I am scared of heights, so that did not very much make sense of uh, me going up there, but we did get a good look of the entire scope of the city, which is enormous actually. And the security was really high at this place, the Eye of London. Now next up we walked all the way over to the store called Forbidden Planet, a store that was suggested to us as a must-see store. It is a store filled with books, fantasy merch and mangas, figurines, posters, dolls, toys, clothes, all of this stuff filled across two stories. There was just a lot. I saw a Nier Automata book, I saw Animal Crossing mangas and a Splatoon book, which was uh, surprisingly matching my current hoodie at the time. I saw Pokemon mangas, a ton of mangas from just about anything you can think of, <laughs> anything fantasy like. This is a nerd's fantasy heaven sort of store, pretty good. And then I found my holy grail item in this store. There was only one left and it was a Skyrim advent calendar with 25 Skyrim related items inside. I had to have that. Here it is, my holy grail. I have not opened any of the the pockets. But this one fell out. Pocket number 18. Skyrim keychain, guys. And that is only one of the pockets. You know what? Follow me on Instagram and in December I will <laughs> pickpocket. <laughs> And in December I will pickpocket, let's say that, each of the pockets. But such a holy grail item. There was only one left. Tiny hats, I'm sorry, I should have bought one for you too, but there was just was not any more. I didn't even know about this. Looking good, excited for the items. Now I also bought some mandatory English chocolate and sweets and stuff. Gonna give that away. Here are the two magazines. I already read through most of the Retro Gamer magazine. There was just a lot of Commodore 64 in that. And in this one, which is pretty good, there was a big section of Genshin Impact. Do you guys remember that game? Loved it. So out of these two I recommend play. I bought a touristy little phone booth keychain. 
terrible. Uh, here's the game. The only game that I picked up. That was terrible, guys. Game hunting in London and I'm home with one game. But we did get a good look around. We did find one thing that I found to be a holy grail item and at least one game. This will not be my last game hunting video, I am pretty sure. Now this one, I wasn't sure if I'm gonna give that away or have it for myself. Uh, not sure. So guys, that pretty much concluded my game hunting in London for this time. We just didn't have the time to go to more game stores than these four because we were just sleeping two nights in London. So we were tight on time. And it wasn't a vacation, it was a sort of a mission trip. The entire trip was covered by Nintendo of Europe and I have to say thank you so much for inviting me. I loved London. I want to go back to London. I think it was a very beautiful city. It was not what I expected. It's just such a high quality city. If you want to save 10% on Nintendo eShop game cards, I have a code ESHA10 on eShagaming.com. Certified Nintendo seller, guys. You get your redeemable code sent immediately to your email after purchasing a Nintendo eShop game card for the Nintendo eShop. I use this all the time, so it is good stuff. And I've been checking out gamer subs now for two weeks straight and I'm loving it. I'm currently having the taste emotional damage. I love the taste of that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Hit like on my video if you want to see more game hunting. I have more notes actually, wait.